Okay, welcome everyone. Thanks for taking the time to join us this evening. Uh, my name is Christian. I'm the Community Engagement Manager here at GigaClip. Um, this evening, I've just got a short presentation just to run through some uh, sort of overview as to who GigaClip is and what we do. Uh, and why we're different uh, from some of the other fibre providers out there. Um, and then we will open the session up to a Q&A uh, and I'll talk you through how this works a little later on. So GigaClear has been around since 2010. Uh, you can see a photo of our lovely head office up in Abingdon, just outside of uh, Oxford there. And um, in that time, we've really focused on rural communities uh, and building to those most in need of fibre. Um, we have expanded and we do build market towns as well, uh, but our bread and butter really are those rural communities. We are backed by Infra Capital, uh, which is a very large European infrastructure investor, um, and we've had in the neighbourhood of £700 million from them. Um, so you can really see the sort of trust um, and sort of vision these companies have within our company. Um, and that's really allowed us to have a really fast um, and large scale rollout of the fibre. Um, we do have a full UK call centre, uh, um, that is our only call centre, uh, and that is based on that first floor of the building you see there. Um, you know, over lockdowns and things, we had staff working from home, um, and here, there and everywhere. Uh, and since then, we have put a big, you know, large amount of investment into our customer operations team, and a lot of training, um, and brought them all in-house. Um, and that's really starting to turn around on our customer service scores and trust pilots and things like that. Um, um, do we get it right every time? To be completely honest, no. You know, we're, we're a sort of a, um, a young, rapidly growing company uh, and sometimes there are mistakes, but we're looking to learn from those mistakes, train, develop um, and be the best company we can going forwards. Um, we have partnered with government schemes in the past uh, and will continue to do so, um, but the majority of our build is, is fully funded by ourselves uh, and these European infrastructure investors. Um, so I mentioned the trust pilot score um, and it's something that is really important to us. Um, we have had over 9000 reviews, um, so you've got a huge sort of data set to, to go from uh, and we are classed as great on trust pilot um, and we are looking to work our way up to excellent. I do encourage um, sort of anyone interested to have a look at the trust pilot reviews um, and if you do come on board as a customer, um, leave an honest review yourself. Um, you know, we, people tend to just leave reviews of, of when it does go poorly, but it, it's really important to let people know when it goes well or if it was average or just leave an honest review uh, and that really helps us uh, helps us to grow. Um, just to show a sort of size of the operation um, this is sort of our build patch we are expanding even further southeast as well um, but we're up in Lincolnshire we're out in Essex down in Plymouth uh, and in, out in Herefordshire um, we have connected over 77,000 customers um, and it was only a couple of weeks ago we had our 75,000 customer announcements. So just shows you the sort of speed and the scale of the company. Um, and we have connected over 700 communities, most of which in quite sort of hard to reach rural areas so far. Um, I mentioned the HQ, we have also expanded. Uh, and so each patch has its own regional office. Uh, and that's been really important, um, you know, to, to be able to attend build sites easier, to, to recruit locally, gain that local knowledge. Um, it, it's been vital. So each patch now has its own regional office as well. And what is fibre? What's all the fuss about? Uh, what are we doing? So three main types of internet connection. Um, Mostly, I mean, there are others, but most people have access to, to one of these three. Uh, and actually the bottom one is mainly phased out already. So that's ADSL, um, which essentially is copper from the exchange to, a, to you know, an open reach cabinet, uh, and then copper from that point to your house or aluminium. Um, it's the old infrastructure, it's been around, you know, years and years. Um, and if you are on that, you know, a really good speed is 24. Um, to be honest, most people that do have that are in very rural areas uh, and their speeds are much lower. Now, the majority of people have FTTC or fibre to the cabinet. And it's as simple as from the exchange to the cabinet, they've done that initial bit of good work. They've brought the fibre to that point. However, from that cabinet to your property, it still remains the old copper network. Um, and depending on the distance from that cabinet to your property will depend on the sort of speeds and service you get. A really good speed would be 80 down and 20 up, um, but you know, 
some people with, with FTTC are on one meg. Uh, really just depends on the age of the infrastructure and the distance to the cab. Now, the difference with full fibre is, is it's literally full fibre to the property. So fibre is brought from the exchange to the cabinet. Uh, and We actually put in our own cabinet as well. Um, and then from that cabinet, we bring an individual fibre to each premises, residential and business. Um, and that fibre cable is capable of a thousand meg. Um, so a huge increase. And that's also symmetrical, as you'll see on the, the slide there. So 900 is our sort of top package download and upload and that we, we run symmetrical packages for every package we do. So we normally start at 200 megs all the way up to 900, depending on your needs. Um, and that's massive. So uploads great for things like Teams calls, uploading, you know, files to work servers, sending photograph albums to friends and that sort of thing. Uh, your download is your, your general browsing, your downloading movies and games, that sort of thing. Um, you know, some Xbox games, for example, um, you can have 100 gig downloads quite easily. Um, so if you've got kids and they're, they're on the gaming or any bits like that, uh, they'll thank you for it. Um, and just to show some of the speeds in the area, I mean, I'm sure there are a bigger range. I just had a quick look um, and there are some properties um, capable of getting the full whack on the FTTC of 80 meg um, and some sort of mid range at 56. So this this individual property, for example, at 56, if that happens to be a, a property that had quite high demand or lots of users wanting to get online at the same time, that 56 could quite easily not service what they need to do already. Uh, and then there is a future proofing element to it. You know, every year our need for internet increases and um, quality of, of TV gets higher. So we'll go from, you know, HD to 4K to 8K and so on. Um, downloads get higher uh, and our need for internet gets higher every year. And so that 56 is only ever going to be there. It's never going to improve. Um, and so actually it's going to get efficiently worse every year. Um, our our fiber, fiber, you know, they, they say it's Full fibers future proof for up to 80 years um, and a thousand meg um, capable line is going to see you uh, a long time. How do we actually build the network? So we are an internet provider uh, and we also build the network. Um, and so we do go through a build journey. We begin at a plan and we'll look at an area and we'll you know, look at what are the uh, available speeds currently. Um, has anyone built full fiber? Is anyone going to build full fiber? Uh, full fibre and if so what is their time scale? Um, we'll look at what it's going to cost to build the network and, and likely take up, um, what are the local challenges and how is that going to link back to our network and um, from that point we then sort of you know a very high level design um, mapping out exactly what method of build we're going to use to get to each property um, and then we validate that plan, which is really important. Um, we, we actually walk the route with the contractors on the ground, um, making any amendments where we need to. Um, and then we mobilise, which essentially is just contracting in the, the contractor, um, handing that work off. Uh, and we do use specialist full fibre builder contractors um, to ensure the best work gets done. Um, we then, of course, begin the build and I'll talk you through two of our build methods in a moment uh, and then we've got live. So when your property becomes live, we call that RFS or ready for service uh, and essentially means we've built, you know, built the network, built the cabinet, powered it. There's light all the way to your property and if you want to come on board as a customer, you can. Now I'll talk about RFS again in a moment, but we'll talk through the two methods of build and um, we'll begin with the messy one. Uh, which is trenching. So you can see there's one of the team here um, or sort of trenching in a narrow verge um, and you can see a few things. So there, there is going to be traffic management um, and, and there is going to be some need for remedial work. So we do only use trenching where we absolutely must, um, but it is a vital part of most builds. Um, and, you know, it's, it's always going to be used to, to, to some degree. Um, the, the traffic management is to allow the teams to work safely and for the safety of the residents um, and remedial works obviously take place. So we're backfilling the verges and reseeding um, when the weather's suitable and they do allow up to six months for that reseeding um, for obvious weather conditions. Um, highways land is always first preference uh, and we are closely observed by the local highways agency. All permits do go through them. Now, a really handy net, uh, website, if you haven't uh, seen it already, is one.network. Um, and I would recommend to take note of that if you haven't um, previously. It's essentially a website which shows all utility providers' permits. 
Um, so it's a third party site. We don't own it, um, but our information is on there. Um, you know, electricity companies, water companies, telecommunications. Um, but if you're ever interested as to some of the works in your local area, that's the best place to go. It's going to have uh, work updated every 15 minutes. And it's got a good level of information on there. Now, our preferred method of build and what we, what we look to utilize as much as possible is physical infrastructure access or PIA. Um, fancy title, it's as simple as using open reach ducting. So in that ducting, um, you've got underground conduits. So from an open reach chamber to the next open reach chamber, you've essentially got a, a, an underground conduit or from pole to pole, you've got a duct across. Now we've got um, access to these ducts and conduits and we essentially blow the fibre through to from point A to point B, B to get it to where it needs to go. Um, and, and this is obviously much cleaner and more efficient than, than digging up the verge or road or footpath to, to put in that um, conduit and chambers ourselves. Now, a couple of reasons we do it, speed, efficiency, less disruption to the community. Um, so yeah, we, we use it where we can. Now, in some cases we can't use it. Um, for example, in some cases there is no ducting there. Um, some cases it's it's very damaged or it's blocked or it's full of providers cables. Um, and so if any of those reasons or others um, comes up and we can't resolve that, that's when we'll look to use the, the trenching. And that's done in the design stage um, of the build journey. So we're testing these ducting to see what is usable and amending the design where we need to. Um, and obviously, as, as the build progresses, bits come up, uh, bits we thought that we could use, we can't, uh, and the design changes sort of throughout the process. Um, and that's why with, with fibre builds, timing is tricky um, because we, we don't know how many complexities are going to rise and how many challenges. So any time skills we do give do take with a pinch of salt. They are intended just to give a rough idea um, and we will sort of you know keep you up to date as the build progresses. Um, we do have a network access team um, and, and they will get in touch. Um, if you have had any letters already, um, you, you know, you'll have had a, a knock on the door and a letter uh, or just a letter, depending where you are. Um, and, and if you do have any questions, it's just a case of giving the, the contact number uh, on the letter a call uh, and they, they've got a specialist team to talk you through that. Um, some of the tools of the trade, so you can see the access cabinet in the top left. Um, that's the most obvious when, you know, when that goes into the community. You see it's landed on a concrete plinth uh, and then it's a big green box. It's actually a big grey box um, now um, and that's made, you know, a couple of reasons, um, but the, the telecommunications industry generally has gone to grey cabinets now. Um, at the bottom left, you've got uh, sort of ducting and fibre straws, just to show you an example of what that looks like. And then depending on the type of build will depend on the uh, sort of point of termination that you have. So you're either going to have a connection pot, which um, if we build to you by trenching or civils, that will be your sort of point of termination. Um, and we sort of, once we've built that to your property, that's classed as you provisioned. Um, you'll see what that looks like out of the ground and flush to the surface of the ground in that picture there. Um, and from that point, obviously, they bring it up, you know, front lawn, uh, clip along a fence, under the gravel, whatever it may be. Uh, the team have seen it all uh, and they talk you through how they're going to get up to the property if you wish for an install. Now, you've also got overhead poles, um, which is nice and clean and easy. It's essentially that the, one of the team goes up the pole, takes it overhead to the property, um, you know, attached to the, to the wall, um, come down, clip along uh, and drill through to your chosen install location. Uh, and then you've got your chamber. So those chambers, you generally got conduits to the property uh, and, you know, bring the fibre through that way. Um, some of the sort of details about the, the local rollout. So um, 338 households um, powered by one access cabinet. Uh, the build has begun um, and collections will start during the summer. Um, and as I mentioned before, very much subject to change. However, that is the initial design and the plan. And that's what we're looking to do. Um, generally, with the smaller communities such as this, um, things do stick to plan more than the larger communities. Um, but I do, you know, I like to be very transparent and clear and just let you know that it's timescales can completely change. It can easily go push back to the winter, um, but we are looking to have people connected this summer. Um, on that note, it is important to note that not everyone will be connected at the same time. Um, what we'll do generally is build the cab and start to connect as many properties as we can at that point. Um, uh, once the cab's lit and all that, those bits, but 
it is a case that it is at a property level, so you could easily have one side of the road able to order service and the other side may need to wait a little longer. So just bear that in mind if, if you know, neighbours or, or people in the, the local community have got a service. Um, it doesn't mean that we've forgotten you, it just means we need to build to you at that point. Um, this rough map, um, I, I know it's horrible to look at, but what I like to include this for is, is it does show the level of PIA use. Um, so you've got these blue circles with the white crosses on, um, and they all indicate poles. Uh, and you can see a bunch of properties are fed from those poles. Um, and so, yeah, just like to include that. It also just shows the rough boundaries of the project. And what I would say is if you're not sure whether you're included or not, uh, or if you've got friends or family uh, nearby that are unsure if they're included within this project. Just go on to gigaclear.com and pop your postcode in, in, in the postcode checker in the first line of your address uh, and you're going to get a message, something like, uh, you know, we're not coming to you just yet or you're going to get, we're on our way, please register. So you're going to get a message there as to whether you're included or not. Um, so touched on reinstatement earlier, um, just to, to confirm that we do use specialist contractors uh, and all reinstatement is uh, at highways and utility standards. <clears throat> Um, we do like to keep residents and businesses um, updated as well as the parish council. Um, so if you do register your interests, um, you will start to get a monthly email just with some local build information where we're going to have permits that month um, and going forwards. Um, and then as the build progresses, you know, sort of status updates, for example, if we built half of the project, if we're running an event, that sort of thing. Um, if you haven't already, it's gigaclear.com forward slash locations. Uh, and as I mentioned, these, you know, we, we send these out once a month. But if you are interested any time between that, go to one.network uh, and all the local info will be on there too. So connection, um, if you, you know, you don't have to opt for an install, it's completely optional. Um, you'll be happy to hear. Um, however, if you do, um, there are a couple of things just to be aware of. So it'd be a simple, you know, place your order, book in your install day, uh, and one of the team would come out. Now, 95% of installs are free of charge. Um, but if you're, you know, if you need a non-standard install, that's where um, a quote would be provided. Things like very, very long driveways, um, that sort of thing where, you know, non-standard works are required, that's where you could provide it with a new application quote. Um, all works are agreed with the householder before the work takes place. So, you know, they're going to tell you how they're going to get from your provision point to your property um, uh, and make sure you're happy with that. Um, it's a good chance for you to have a chat with, with the team and make them aware of anything they need to miss um, uh, and anything you also, you know, if you've just had the drive done, for example, um, anything you're unsure about, just let them know. Um, you will have an external connection box on the outside of the property and from that point they'll drill through the wall um, to your chosen install location uh, and just make them aware of where you would like this and within reason they're going to work to that request. Again, anything non-standard uh, you may need to give them notice on um, and there may be additional costs. Um, on the day they're going to set your router up uh, and just to be aware you will need two power points, one for the router and one for the sort of twist port uh, which sort of powers the fibre. Um, and you, you know, set you up on the day, get your password and you'll be up and running on the day. Um, and without being too salesy, um, just want to give you an example of what the deals can look like. Uh, these are what the deals are today, but they, you know, they change every month. So you will just need to um, have a look when you're able to order and, and see what the deals are at that time. Um, you don't have to order straight away. You, you can leave it, but generally by pre-ordering or, or pre-registering like this, you get the best a very good deal. Uh, so you can see here 17 quid a month gives you 200 megs up and down, 26 pound a month gives you 600 meg up and down and 49 a month gives you 830 up and down. Um, now those top two deals do come with an additional router uh, and that helps to expand the Wi-Fi within the property. And by, by registering um, like um, most of you have on the call, um, you do actually lock in a special offer um, that will be available when you can order service and that's 500 megs symmetrical for 20 pounds a month. 
Uh, we do also have um, sort of bespoke business packages. Uh, if you are a business on the call, I would recommend just to take note of business at gigaclear.com. Um, and even though it's fairly early days, no harm in popping them an email um, with, with your business information, what you what you would be looking for, uh, and they'll get back to you in due course um, with, with your sort of options. Um, home phone is something we didn't have until last summer um, uh, and at sort of our existing customers request we brought it in um, and you can see the packages are, are in my opinion quite reasonable so you've got even weekends for three pounds a month even weekends plus which essentially just includes mobiles uh, on top of your landline for six uh, at any time so mobile or landline anytime for nine um, and none of these packages or our broadband package has any line rental costs um, so you can completely scrap that straight away. A um, couple things to be aware of on the on the VoIP. Um, you it is an internet phone, so voice over internet protocol, uh, and it is powered by the internet router. So if you did have a power cut, it's going to knock your internet router out and therefore your phone line. So if you do suffer with power cuts, um, especially if you are in an area with poor mobile reception, uh, we actually recommend not to go for this package. Um, things like battery backups, the routers are being looked at. Um, but they're not industry ready yet. Um, and also you can keep your telephone number uh, and it does keep, it does take 10 business days to port across. Uh, and I would strongly advise not to cancel your existing provider until you're fully set up um, with GigaK and you've got your number across. Uh, we have partnered with DCMS, so the Department of Digital, Culture, Media and Sport, uh, and we can utilise the, the Gigabit Broadband Voucher Scheme. Um, I'm not 100% sure at this stage whether or not we'll be using that for this project, um, but it doesn't affect you in any way, shape or form. Um, it won't cost you anything either way. Um, and even if we do use it, you'll have the option of applying for a voucher or not. Either way, won't have any additional costs. Essentially what it does is helps us to recoup a little bit of funding towards the network build and it is something we're not allowed to make any money on. Um, it just helps to sort of cushion the investment a little bit uh, and get to the next community moving forwards. Um, especially as voucher rep will talk you through this if we do use, look to utilise the Gibbet Broadband Voucher Scheme. Uh, and that's it. So thank you very much for listening. Um, hope it has been useful. Um, I'll just leave this here with network build queries at gigclear.com. So that is the email address uh, following this evening if you do have any questions um, and the telephone number for, for that team. And then you've got gigclear.com forward slash locations, which um, is the easiest place to register your interests. Now, um, you've also got that handy QR code to take you there. So what I'll do at this point is I'll just open the Q&A session and I'll just pop an announcement in here.